Hey y'all, Matt here with another Bible video. And today's Friday, we're gonna uh, try to summarize the Old Testament chronological order real quick in five minutes. Um, but I wanna take a second before we start this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and share this with your friends. Um, but uh, we've been talking this week about why the Old Testament is still relevant, why it's important. But um, sometimes it can be kind of hard to see that because we don't necessarily understand the chronological order of the Old Testament because our Bible isn't organized in chronological order. It's actually organized by uh, some historical books and then some wisdom literature and then some uh, prophets. And so it can be kind of uh, difficult to see the chrono chronological order as we read sometimes. Um, but let's get into it so we can get this done. Um, we obviously begin in Genesis. Genesis means beginnings and we see creation. God creates everything. It's good. It's holy. Um, there's no, um, you know, sin or death or destruction or anything. Uh, he creates Adam and Eve and he places them in a garden of Eden, which is uh, basically the holy of holies, uh, like from the temple where God dwells and they're dwelling with God. Um, God basically, um, you know, sets them as his image bearers as his, to rule creation on his behalf and um, instead of following his rules they decide to rebel and do things their own way and they seek to basically become their own gods and make their own decisions over god they don't submit to him um, they take the fruit they eat it and man falls and this is where sin and death and destruction enters the world and this is how we can explain all sin death and destruction this is where it came from um, even issues in creation originate from here. Um, as sin enters the world, we see it progressively gets worse. Um, violence basically takes over the world. God sees it. He's not happy with that. His standard is holiness, and they're not holy. They're violent, very, very violent. And he actually uh, starts to talk about possibly destroying the earth. And um, But he picks one man out who uh, is righteous, and that is Noah. And he commissions him to build an ark. And um, after Noah builds this ark, God basically, uh, in an act of uh, deconstruction, allows all the waters to collapse on themselves, flood the earth, and deconstruct, basically, creation temporarily. Um, once the flood is over, we see Noah exits the ark, and God recommissions him to basically to uh, rule over the creation um, and to multiply. Um, and he does that. And then we see um, three people come, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham is the father of Isaac, who's the father of Jacob. And Abraham is picked out by God as basically the father of a nation. His descendants are be gonna become the nation of Israel. And these are gonna be God's chosen people. And by doing this, God is basically picking a nation uh, that he wants to uh, basically um, give all of his rules and uh, commandments to um, live in peace with him as a unholy people. And he wants them to be an example for the rest of the world, how godly people live. And obviously we know that this doesn't quite go according to plan. Um, the name Israel actually comes from um, Abraham's grandson, Jacob who God actually renames Israel. So we see the uh, the nation of Israel born here. Um, Genesis ends with Israel in slavery in Egypt, and um, they're crying out to the Lord to rescue them, and the Lord hears them, and he does. Uh, we know about the plagues, and um, God brings Israel out of slavery in Egypt. Um, they cross the Red Sea, and he basically tells them that um, he's going to lead them to a promised land, a land of milk and honey that's uh, blessed, that uh, allows provision for crops and uh, for their animals and everything. And um, that period of uh, actual slavery in Egypt lasted about 430 years. Um, so after they leave Egypt, we see there's an issue here. There's an unholy group of sinners called Israel, and they're trying to dwell with a holy God. And in order for them to dwell with a holy God, they have to... Uh, figure out how they can intermingle because, um, you know, holiness is not compatible with sin. And so this is where the, everybody's favorite book, Leviticus, comes in. Um, Leviticus is actually, um, we see it as a bunch of rules or legalism, sometimes legalistic stuff. But um, what Leviticus actually is, is God, uh, out of his grace and his love for his people, giving them 
um, basically a set of rules that they can follow, things that they can do as an unholy people to approach a holy God and to live in communion with him. Um, after Leviticus, they uh, build a tabernacle, which is where God will dwell among them. And we see the book of Numbers. Um, and in Numbers, we see um, the people have just been uh, rescued from Egypt. They should be happy. They're not slaved anymore. And what do they do on the way to the promised land? They start grumbling and complaining. Um, they even say, we would have been better off if God had left us in Egypt to die. And so um, basically, um, the people, they lack faith. They're grumbling. They're complaining. They're not doing what the Lord tells them to. Um, he tells them to go scope out this land that he's going to uh, give uh, to them. And when they send out 12 spies, 10 of the 12 actually come back and say, whoa, the, the armies that are already there are too mighty. We're not going to be able to take over. Um, so we, sh we definitely shouldn't pursue this conquest. And then two spies, uh, Joshua and Caleb, say, yes, we need to pursue this uh, conquest. But overall, the 10 that uh, said no, that were disobedient to the Lord, went out. They raised up the people. And out of God's grace, because he loves us, he gave them what they wanted. They didn't want to go take the land like he told them to. So instead, he left them to wander in the desert for 40 years until that generation of people died out. And then once their uh, sons and daughters became old enough and um, all of the, the generation that was present that was grumbling and complaining and disobedient died out, um, he brings them into uh, Canaan. And this is where the book of Joshua picks up. Um, we see a conquest or war where they take the land of Canaan, which lasts about seven years in Joshua. And then we enter the period of Judges, which is in the book of Judges. And this is basically an era where there are judges over Israel. Um, and these judges are not quite a king, but they're a uh, spiritual and military leader that are over the people. And what we're going to see in Judges is that the people are in a constant vicious cycle. Um, they'll walk in obedience to the Lord for a while, and then they'll get too strong on their own power, and they'll turn away from him. Another nation will come in and oppress them a little bit, and then they'll cry out to the Lord. Um, they'll go back into obedience with the Lord, and the Lord will send another judge to rescue them. And we see cycles of these judges. Um, that period lasts about 350 years. Um, then we enter the period of the United Kingdom, which is going to last 110 years. And this is seen in First and Second Samuel and First Chronicles. And this is basically uh, what we hear in Sunday school a lot. Um, the people of Israel, they want to be like their neighbors, and they're not content with God being their king, and they demand an earthly king. So out of God's goodness, despite knowing that it's not what's best for them, he gives them a king, and uh, he picks a king for them that they would have picked, that is earthly, attractive, strong, all these things, and that is King Saul. And Saul is an awful king. He's disobedient to the Lord. He does stupid stuff, and um, eventually he's going to end up um, you know, killing himself on a battlefield so he doesn't get captured. And King David, the famous King David, is going to take over uh, the reign of Israel. And this is probably one of the uh, most... Um, obedient times in Israel's history. They did really, really well, very prosperous. And uh, King David essentially was the closest to a uh, godly um, and faithful ruler that Israel will ever see besides the Messiah. And that's why a lot of times they refer to um, Jesus as the son of David, because um, one, he comes from the bloodline of David, but two, David was about as close as we got to Jesus. The biggest difference there was that David was still a uh, corrupt man. He still struggled with sin, battled with sin, and he actually fell to sin. Um, we see that in the book. Um, after the death of David, um, his son Solomon takes over. Solomon's the wisest man. Um, he does pretty well for a while, but then towards the end of his life, he uh, ends up getting with some pagan women and kind of falls away from the Lord. And we know nothing good comes from that. So the kingdom starts to erode and go downhill. Um, and then as we get to the next 350 year period, which is in first and second Kings and second Chronicles, we see the kingdom of Israel actually divide. Um, it's going to divide into Judah and Israel and, um, Israel is going to be in the North and Judah is going to be in the South. So they basically become two independent nations with independent rulers. And at times they're even fighting with each other. Um, this period lasts about 350 years. 
And um, what we're going to see during this period, God is actually going to send godly prophets to these nations in order to uh, basically send them his message. Um, and a lot of times it's not a good message. It's a message that they're being disobedient to the Lord, that they need to repent and turn back to him. And this is where the books of the prophets come in, uh, a lot of them. Um, the prophets that uh, went to the land of Judah, the nation of Judah, were Joel, Micah, Isaiah, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, and Jeremiah. And the prophets that went to Israel were uh, Amos and Hosea. And then what we're going to see after this, after this period of um, the divided kingdoms, is uh, ultimately neither kingdom remains faithful to the Lord. Um, Israel is actually going to fall first. Uh, the Assyrians are going to come in and invade, and they're going to take it over and basically send the people into exile. And then not too long after that, another world power uh, actually takes over the Assyrians, and they're going to take out Judah, and that is the Babylonians. And so the Babylonians are going to send the people in, of Judah into exile. And so they're going to live this 70-year period of exile where they're basically living in the foreign land of their enemies. They don't have a temple, um, and they're, they're kind of lost. It's, it's like a time of wilderness for them. Um, and after this 70 years is over, um, we're actually going to see the Syrians are going to come in. They're going to take over the Babylonians, and a King Cyrus is going to come up to power. And King Cyrus, as part of his projects to keep the peace, he actually allows the Israelites, the Jews, to go back to Israel and to start reconstructing the temple and the walls. And this is where we see the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. Um, they do a lot of social reform, trying to get the people back in accordance with Scripture. Um, they rebuild the, the walls around the temple, and they actually rebuild the temple. Um, and then after this, we actually are going to see um, the book of Esther in the same kind of time period um it, it doesn't necessarily talk about this stuff but it's in that time period and that's good to know um but then after this time period after they're allowed back into uh their land they're still not a nation they still don't own the land but they have their temple back they're allowed to worship and what we're actually going to see is a uh, 400 year period of silence where there's no prophets, uh, God doesn't inspire any scripture, and this is the gap that we see between the Old and the New Testaments. And then after that, we're going to see basically the New Testament uh, pick up the story with uh, the Gospels, with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But um, I hope this video was beneficial. Uh, I don't know if I quite made it under 10 minutes, but uh, it was pretty close. I'm actually kind of impressed. But um, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and share it with your friends. Um, there's an email in the description below. If you have any topics you want to see covered in these videos, um, please email them to me, and I'll do my best to cover those. Uh, but until the next video, I love you guys. Blessings.